Welcome back students. Now we are going to learn about a new chapter animal fibers. It's chapter number 2 animal fibers. Children if you wish to buy a new fabric for a wedding maybe smooth, fine, soft and lustrous which type of fabric would you prefer? Might be for wedding silk. There are so many types of fabrics, isn't it? Cotton, jute, nylon, polyester, so many are there. Listen children, here you can have a look on different types of plant fiber. Okay, so from the plant, Different parts of the plant are used here to obtain fibers. So first one from the fruit, from the fruit, from the coconut fiber we are obtaining one type of fiber and from the part bast or stem we are obtaining jute. From the stem, stem of the plant we are obtaining jute. This is the second type of fiber. Then third part leaf we are obtaining sisal fibers we are obtaining sisal fiber from the part leaf usually this fiber are used for uh, making mats and carpets and all mats and carpets so this is about plant fiber and two more things about plant fiber from the part stalk from the part stalk we can obtain one type of the fiber so usually straws of wheat and rice are used here to make out the fiber and then from the part seeds cotton cotton seeds are used here to obtain one type of fiber so if you're taking a plant fiber different parts of the plant are used here to obtain fibers so we have seen different plant fibers and animal fibers you can have a look silk silk you can see and wool generally woolen socks you might be having right so those are different types of animal fibers and then synthetic fibers synthetic fibers synthetic fibers which are made man-made which are made by chemical substances okay so for example nylon so this is a nylon thread nylon thread and rayon so all these are coming under different synthetic fibers. So now we are going to learn about animal fabrics in detail. Yes students, now about mind map for animal fibers. So about animal fibers, fiber is nothing but long, narrow, flexible thread either made by natural or artificial substance it is used to make textile it is used to make textile so basically there are two different types of animal fibers they are nothing but they are obtained from animals the fibers are obtained from animals they are wool and silk clear so now we are going to see about wool so here we can get this type of fiber from sheep angora rabbit camel goat and so on so many animals are there so from that we are just taking fleas fleas okay so from the sheep fleas is obtained fleas is nothing but hair hair is removed and that process removing of fleas from sheep is shearing okay now after this step the fleece is washed to remove the dirt and the second step is scouring scouring and then the third step after thorough cleaning and washing then the same fleece will be subjected to sorting sorting in sense based on the quality it's getting separated that's what sorting based on qualities of fleece then after sorting it will be grading grading in sense they are sorted according to length color and textures of fibers and then 
it's continued by spinning and weaving spinning and weaving and here the carded wool is then stretched and twisted into yarn into yarn yarn is nothing but the spun wool okay so they are twisted and they are made to yarn and from the yarn you are obtaining the fabric you can obtain the fabric so this is what about the first wool okay so from that how we are getting the fabric about the processing and then the second part is silk so we are obtaining the silk from cocoons of silk worms obtained from cocoons of silk worms so the first stage of this is egg egg female moth lays egg female moth lays egg the second stage is larva larva here the egg hatches into larva so from the egg it hatches into larva and then the third stage pupa pupa here the caterpillar spins the silk filament cocoons the caterpillar spins the silk filament cocoons and then by the formers the cocoons will be boiled to obtain the fibers so that step that step is said to be reeling reeling then once it's got sorted or separated that is spun into silk threads they are spun into silk threads and from that from the yarn again it will be subjected to twisted and dyes will be added dyes will be added and finally you will be getting a silk fabric so finally then you are getting silk sari or any silk made so this is what the entire mind map of this lesson now we are going to learn about each and every fabric in detail yes children now about fibers so first before entering into animal fibers you must know what do you mean by fiber right so fiber is a long narrow and flexible thread of a natural or artificial substance that is used to make textile okay either it can be a natural substance or is natural substance in sense it might be plant fiber or animal fiber or artificial substance some chemical sub, uh, substance is made also artificial substance which is used to make textile okay so this fiber is a starting point of the textile chain it's a starting point it's a single unit okay is a starting point of the textile chain then fibers may be obtained from plants animals or various non living or artificial substances so either this fiber can be obtained from plants or animals or by artificial substances also these fibers are spun into yarn so all the fibers are collectively uh collectively taken as or spun as yarn yarn the yarn is woven or knit into fabric then the yarn the woolen balls sorry not woolen uh, the yarn is woven or knit into fabric which is then used to make finished products such as cloth and bags so from the fabric we are still extending to any finished product like uh, cloth and bags and all okay so uh, pl about plant fibers there are different types of plant fibers jute cotton and all they belong to plant fibers and about animal fibers wool and silk so we are going to uh, learn about this animal fibers in detail wool fibers wool fibers are nothing but hair yielding of different types of animals such as sheep kashmir goat angora rabbit yak camel and so on so we are going to see about each and every animal how they are taking out the fleece so about sheep they are having two different types of hair the outer hair will be coarse hair and that is said to be a skimp and the inner one will be fine soft and the coat which is close to skin which is close to skin and that is true wool that is true the inner part the inner hair is said to be as yes, true wool and uh, wool wool fibers is obtained from the inner hair can you understand so sheep 
is generally having two different types of hair one in the outer part that is coarse and it's said to be a skim and other one is the inner which is very close to skin and from that only we are obtaining the true wool and wool fiber wool fibers is obtained from that clear now about the second animal cashmere goat so cashmere goat was generally soft fiber soft fiber obtained from the cashmere goat and that type of fiber is meant to be as cashmere okay they are soft fiber they are obtained from cashmere goat and which you are obtaining from cashmere goat that fiber is said to be as cashmere okay so they are having two different types of uh, coat here the outer coat the outer coat fibers are quite coarse quite coarse and the high quality is in the inner inner part okay so to obtain the inner coat we should just uh, dehair or comb the outer hair part okay so high quality is obtained by dehairing or combing so there are two different types of coat outer coat and inner coat and from the inner coat only we are obtaining the high quality fabric okay so they are generally found in this type of uh, cashmere goat is found in mountain regions of china and tibet clear yes children about the third animal angora rabbit okay so we are getting fabric from this angora rabbit also here we are getting soft white fiber soft white fiber and that type of wool is said to be as angora wool that we are obtaining from angora rabbit clear so generally they are stiff long and that should be removed to just take out the inner part okay so soft white fur will be observed in the inner part and from that fiber we are obtaining the fiber then the fiber is spun into yarn they are spun into yarn and this type of fibers are generally used to make sweaters used to make sweaters clear kids now about the fourth one that is yoke they are found in tibet okay and then they are having two different types of hair the outer one will be obviously long coarse hair and the inner one will be soft and smooth soft and silky okay so from the inner hair we are obtaining the wool wool is obtained from the inner hair clear now about the fifth animal that is camel okay so the camel fleet consists of an overcoat and an inner coat that is the overcoat is obviously long coarse hair it grows up to 15 inches 15 inches long and then uh, the inner coat is we are obtaining the fleece from the soft fine undercoat clear so basically this camel wool is healthy natural product is a healthy natural product and then it's an excellent thermal insulator excellent thermal insulator clear students so this is what about different types of animals these are different wool yielding animals so from all these animals we are able to obtain wool so we are going to see about sheep farming so sheep farming means rearing and breeding sheep okay so sheep or reared mainly for their wool for their wool in india sheep or reared in rajasthan jammu kashmir himachal pradesh and uttarakhand okay so about their feed what they eat they feed on grass also eat with mixtures of pulses corn dry grass and grains okay and then about their lifetime about their lifetime a sheep lives for up to 11 to 12 years the total life span is around 11 to 12 years about the common breeds the name of the common breeds lohi rampur nali marwari and patanwari clear so this is what about sheep farming now we are going to learn about different steps in wool production 
So the first step is shearing and then scouring, sorting, grading, carding and then spinning and weaving. So we are going to learn about each and every steps in detail. So first step about shearing. So here this is nothing but process of removing the removing and collecting the hair from the animal okay so they used to mention as fleas also so they are collecting the fleas of the animal so from the sheep they are collecting the fleas so they are collecting without harming the animals without harming the animals using shearing tools they are having some respective shearing tools and using the tool they are uh, just collecting the hair of the animal so usually this tip is done in summer season so that again when winter comes they, they will be growing back again the hair so that they can withstand uh, the uh, winter season clear and then uh, the amount of wool we are collecting from each and every sheep will be approximately 1 to 3 kg will be 1 to 3 kg so this is what about the first step shearing yes children now about the second step scouring the wool the wool obtained after this process shearing is subjected to the step scouring so that wool is said to be as raw or grease wool okay so, and so here it contains dust dirt and all so the process of thorough cleaning is said to be as scouring so that's what it contains dust and dirt it requires thorough cleaning so that step will be done here and that is nothing but the scouring now about this third step sorting okay so what what will go on here what will happen here i'm sorry what will happen here in the scouring step uh, thorough cleaning will be done so further the same fleas will be carried to the next step sorting here the damaged wool is carefully removed okay so it might have different types of fleeces so all those things the damaged one or the inferior one will be um, selectively taken away from that da damaged wool is carefully removed they are sorted based on qualities of fleece so that's what about the step sorting now about the fourth step grading okay so here wool wool is sorted according to length color and texture of fibers the same wool or the fleece which is obtained from the step sorting is carried further carried to the grading step and here it's again sorted based on their length color and texture length color and texture so they are determined by the grade of the wool okay so the finer the wool the price is higher if it's very fine the price is higher clear so this is what about this step grading yes children now about the fifth step carding so before the wool which is proceeded to making fabric it should be straightened and clean okay so here tangled fibers that is a twisted fibers or separated to form continuous fiber continuous fiber so then for that they are passed through a series of metal teeth to straighten the fibers then they are passed through a series of metal teeth to just straighten the fibers then they are given different colors they are given different colors using dyes or chemical substances chemical substances they are they are dyed here they are giving different colors here now about the final step that is spinning and weaving spinning and weaving here the fiber what we are getting from the carding after that step the same fiber subjected to here subjected here for spinning and weaving so here the stretched and twisted uh, fibers stretched and twisted fibers are they then made into thin yarns or then made into thin yarns and then again the yarns are spun together spun together spun and joined to form a single strand of yarn spun and joined together to form a single strand of yarn then from that you are getting the woolen 
woolen yarn. So that is used here for is woven or knitted into fabric. So from that we are obtaining fabric. We are obtaining fabric. So from the fabric we can further produce some finished products such as uh, um, what is that cloth, cloth and bags and all. So this is what about in general about how they are processing out the wool into fabric. The steps which is used here for processing out the wool into fabric. So what are the steps children? Shearing, scouring, sorting, grading, carding, spinning and weaving. Shearing, they are removing the hair from the respective animal. Scouring, they are just made into, uh, they are just subjected to thorough cleaning, thorough cleaning. And then about sorting, they are just dividing, classifying the wool according to their qualities, according to their qualities. And then again the next step, grading, here also they are sorted based on length, color and texture of the fibers. And then the next step, carding, here the tangled fibers are separated. So that metal sheath, this um, a series of metal sheath, metal teeth is used here to just straighten the fibers and the, after that it's subjected to spinning and weaving step. Here the stretched and twisted fiber, fibers are made into yarn, thin yarn and then finally into a bundle to form a single strand of yarn and then you are getting a woolen yarn at the end from that you are able to produce a fabric so you can finally make out any finished products such as cloth and bags and all is that clear so these are the different steps for processing out the fabric properties of wool okay so the first one is durability durability it stands for a long time hot fiber retains its nice appearance for long time and then absorption of moisture about the absorption of moisture wool absorbs moisture from the body and retains inside the fibers so moisture will be absorbed but it will be retained in the fibers it helps to hold body heat it helps to hold body heat the third property diability Diability, they are colored with different types of dyes, different types of dyes, you are having different, you can see different types of sweaters, socks and all, is it not? Yes. Now about resistance to fire, resistance to fire, it does not burn easily, wool does not burn easily, when subjected to flame, it will smolder instead. Okay, next thing is about chemical structure. They contain or they compose of natural protein which are biodegradable. Okay, and then about insulating nature. Insulating nature. It does not allow heat to transfer through it very easily. So, it does not allow heat to transfer through it very easily. So, these are the different properties of wool. Quality of wool. Okay, so the quality of wool is judged by its length, diameter, elasticity, strength, durability, effectiveness and as an insulator, insulator and its ability to make coloring dyes. So with all these properties, they are, uh, they are judged by their quality. Okay, so it's then finally graded into first quality or second quality like that clear only based on all these properties they are finally set to be as first quality or however clear now about the second animal fiber that is silk okay so silk silk is obtained from cocoons of silkworms cocoons of silkworms a large number of cocoons are unwound carefully to make long threads so together it will be there so that will be unwounded and then uh, they are used for further making long threads and then these threads are spun together to make them thicker and then oven to make silk okay so again these threads are spun together as yarn and then that is further utilized to make oven to make silk and then raising silkworms for the production of raw silk 
raising silk worms for the production of raw silk is known as sericulture an important question once again raising silk worm for the production of raw silk is known as sericulture clear history of silk okay it's a valuable fabric that symbolizes wealth and prosperity is it not it's a valuable fabric that symbolizes wealth and prosperity normally for weddings we usually prefer silk is it not that's what that symbolizes wealth and prosperity in early days use of silk was reserved only for kings and monarchs okay the romans sold silk for its weight in gold mean to say they are equal unto gold china is credited with the first production of silk at around 3000 bc yes children now we are going to learn about life cycle of silk moth okay so the first stage is egg you can see here mulberry leaves eggs are there is it not is it clearly visible yes now this eggs are the first stage of the life cycle of silk moth okay and then the female moth lays eggs the female moth lays eggs and it will be done in summer during summer and then the egg hatches during spring during spring so the first stage is egg and female moth lays eggs that will be done in summer and it hatches on spring clear now about the second stage after egg has hatched then egg hatches into larva okay or else it's also said to be a caterpillar caterpillar so they feed on mulberry leaves it's one important question they feed on mulberry leaves then this stage lasts for last for 27 days okay so totally 27 days the stages will be there and then larva shed their skin during this time during this 27 days larva shed their skin four times and the process of shedding the skin is said to be as moulting process of shedding the skin is said to be as moulting so this is what about the second stage larva it's hatched into larva egg is hatched into larva they feed on mulberry leaves and then this stage lasts for 27 days and then within this time period they shed the skin for four times and that process is said to be a moulting clear students yes now children about the third stage pupa you can see this structure here it's said to be as cocoons okay so what is this the caterpillar or larva which spins fine silk filament around it in layers it's said to be as cocoons can you understand the larva which is surrounded by the silk filament is said to be as cocoons so it takes 3 to 7 days to prepare the cocoons silk worm take 3 to 7 days to prepare the cocoons and then so we are getting the silk threads from this cocoons silk threads are obtained from cocoons and the color of the cocoons ranges from white to golden yellow clear so this is what about the third stage pupa the final stage silk moth the silk moth comes out of the cocoons okay so the pupa changes into moth here okay the pupa which is surrounded by the cocoons no that is changed to silk moth so obviously what will happen then the female adult the female adult will lay egg and the cycle continues okay understood so they are removing out the cocoons um, from the larva by means of a process they are just uh, boiling in the water and that cocoons are removed out separately and further that is used for production of silk and here about the larva again it is changed to silk moth silk moth and again in the female adult lays egg and the cycle continues so this is what about the life cycle of silk moth clear and about the cocoons what they are separating from the larva no that cocoons they are just dipping in hot water to just take separately the silk threads so the process of obtaining silk threads from the cocoon by dipping in hot water is said to be as 
reeling reeling is that clear and then for every four to eight cocoons four to eight cocoons are twisted together cocoons are twisted together to make a single strand single strand of silk here and then it spun together to form silk yarn silk yarn and then from that you are obtaining silk cloth weavers are obtaining silk cloth from the silk yarn so this is what about the process of obtaining the silk fabric from the silk moth now about the properties of silk okay so here texture they are soft smooth and lustrous is it not then strength they are strongest natural fiber they are the strongest natural fiber absorption of moisture the absorptive capacity of the silk fabric makes comfortable even for warmer atmosphere so the absorption nature is comfortable even for warmer atmosphere and then insulating nature it's cool to wear in summer and warm to use in winter clear and then cleanliness and washability it does not attract dirt because of its smooth surface so this is what about different properties of silk texture strength absorption nature insulating nature and cleanliness and washability quality of the silk depends on different factors okay so uh, it depends on types of the silk worm types of silk worm second thing it depends on the quality of the mulberry leaves what it feeds okay fed to the silk worm and the third one based on the selection of cocoons then fourth one weaving and finishing of silk thread weaving and finishing of silk thread about health hazards okay so here the first one is sorter's disease or anthrax so it's basically an infectious disease which is caused by the bacterium bacillus anthracis bacillus anthracis so this bacterium will be present in the fleas of infected animal fleas of infected animal it causes severe blood infection and then laborers that sort fleeces are at maximum risk of getting infected by this disease who are is working under the silk industry you know they are at maximum risk to get this infection disease infectious diseases disease and then about the second thing allergic reaction so this allergic skin disorder because uh, might be uh, that is because of irritation of skin and eyes irritation of skin and eyes so you'll be getting this allergic reaction also so this is what about health hazards yes children now about the last part of the chapter occupational hazards of silk industry okay so various chemicals used for degrading disinfecting bleaching and dyeing those chemicals cause irritation of eyes and skin clear then second thing is the scales of moth of silk and silk fibers protein can initiate asthma okay then third one many of the dyes that are used to color silk the chemicals which are used there for coloring silk no that is absorbed by our digestive system and if ingested if it is intaken it can cause health problem then so all these things can be avoided by personal protective equipment and strict personal hygiene strict sorry strict personal hygiene so this is what about occupational hazards of silk industry clear a recap for this lesson silk is a natural fiber made from cocoons silk moth is large white insect which passes through different stages in its life cycle egg larva pupa and moth then about wool wool fibers are soft to touch and provides warmth the steps involved in the processing are shearing scouring sorting grading carding and spinning and all so this is what about this entire chapter so students with this we have come to an end of this chapter so study well do all the exercises worksheet and unit test and all 
and submit in the respective email id and i'm just going to give you an activity for you absorption of moisture what are you going to do you're going to take collect different types of sample cloth a piece of cloth not big cloth and all sample cloth like uh, cotton jute nylon wool wool and all so collect how much ever you are able to get take it take a piece of cloth and soak it in water and after some time absorb observe the uh, moisture content how much it's absorbing that you want to find out okay see listen the absorption of moisture in between all the all the different types of fabrics will vary for example cotton will readily absorb water is it not and it varies in all the different types so it's your responsibility to find to just report to me the absorption of moisture of different fabrics in a table cotton how it is getting absorbed and uh, about that i just need that information uh, uh, and you please send the information in the mail okay so this is what your activity absorption of moisture of different types of fabrics yes students now about mind map habitat the place where animal live feeds and reproduces is called habitat it's again divided into terrestrial and aquatic terrestrial land living animals aquatic water living animals terrestrial animal includes desert forest polar region mountains and grassland these areas and then aquatic animals water includes both fresh water and salty water and then about their body coverings they are having some special structures to protect themselves is it not so what are the different body coverings we saw feather shell scales wool and fur can you all understand so with this we have come to end of this chapter thank you students